This feature wall is made entirely of scrap cedar. It looks pretty good. After that, it's all about fans. Speed? Welcome back to another beautiful day in the valley. But my lumber is as wet as that rain cloud because I still haven't finished my dry kiln. I think if I had let go of some of the fancy features that I wanted in this dry kiln, I probably could have slapped together some sort of structure that would have dried lumber relatively quickly. But because I'm stubborn, I am continuing to work on this project. And we're now two years into this build. So, maybe this year. The motto of this build, just like any other build I've been doing here, the entire kiln itself is use waste wood, use waste. So what I'd have here is a bunch of cutoffs that were rejected from the actual kiln side. And I've just run them through the table saw to kind of square them up. And they're gonna be going inside the boiler room. This wall here is on the boiler operating side of the kiln and it's insulated to prevent the sea cam from sweating on the inside so that means that it gets a little vapor barrier wait did i just fold up a piece of poly and save it who does that it's like two feet by seven feet what, like what are you going to use that for there's a fine line between recycling and hoarding all right let's put some finish on this wall Accidentally building a feature wall. I was just trying to use up scrap cedar like this, right? The result is it looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna keep going with it. I'm not sure if you can tell, but at this point I've reached busy work. The parts we need to finish off the wood boiler, which is going to be the central workhorse of this machine, are still not here. I added some insulation on that far wall there. This is some like premium inch and a half insulation, and I basically glued it onto the side of the sea can with some special glue. And I have it braced up right now so that it's pressed against that. And then I've glued the inside edges of everything as well. And then I'm gonna tape all the joints, just like I've done down here. And then it gets a layer of heat protective, essentially fancy aluminum foil. Here's a look at it on the kiln side. We had the entire wall and ceiling wrapped with it and it was feeling a lot like the inside of a space shuttle. There's not any clearance for anything else. It's probably only eight inches right there right now. So, which is within our specs, I think. Uh, millimeters make my head hurt. Okay, a quick flying intermission. I think it's time that we highlight some of the growth that's happening in our YouTube channel. And I just want to do a quick shout out to some of our biggest fans here. All right, I've been working on fans here for a bit. Just kidding, I actually do appreciate the support. If you're not subscribed, you can do so below. And by working, what I actually mean is destroying. Did what you're not supposed to do, and I chopped this thing up a little bit. As you can see, I've knocked the plug off. And the only thing I have to keep in mind now is that this plug has built into it a five amp fuse. This is useful because it prevents your fan from surging or catching fire due to excessive voltage or shorting out. In fact, this deluxe fan was probably one of the best fans I could find on Amazon, partially due to its high air volume movement, but also because of some of its built-in safety features, all of which I have proceeded to remove. And I've gone into the switch box here and I've removed the pull chain and I've direct wired the high speed setting on. So basically when you plug it in, it runs at full speed. 
Except you can't plug it in because you knocked the plug off. There's another fan I'll have to do that for. Why do I even buy new stuff? It's like a brand new fan. First thing I do, crack it open. Getting pretty good at that. So I have to get rid of the three stage clicker because I can't be going in and out of the C can to turn the fans on and off. So the chain has to go. There's a scary part. Is that full speed? Yep. Well, I have this exhaust fan. It's supposed to be humidity controlled. It's an inline duct fan is what I'm using. It's 120 volt, 20 watts. Okay, so this fan came with a few components. We have here a speed control display unit. We'll see if that thing works. Some wire, a few screws and stuff are hanging it. All right, so let's get into it. What do we got here? So I dug in here to the speed controller and this is clearly just a low voltage speed controller. Pretty small, 12 to 24 volts probably. Well, this is just kind of fun. So unlike I originally thought, this is not a controller. It is a thermometer and humidistat, and it's just wall mounted. So it's basically a greenhouse kit, and it comes with a humidity monitor. But it's just something that you would look at, and you would determine whether you need to turn a dial up. So I've mounted it inside the boiler room, and that's all I'm going to do with that. I've been uh, wiring away here for the last while and because I'm prototyping I've been doing things like that and this and that kind of loose almost a good idea when you're prototyping to just hurry up and get it finished because you don't know for sure that it's gonna work so um, I have here a humidistat it runs to a power controller and then I've wired in the humidity which is the fan, exhaust fan, which is a small one, and the flap that opens an air intake. So now I just gotta figure out how to use this thing. Okay, so red light here means there's no power running to the humidity control. And I've switched to dehumidification. I've set some pretty high values here, like turns on if it's above 45% humidity, and then it turns off below that. <laughs> Surprising that it worked on the first try here. <clears throat> I mean, of course it worked on the first try. Before I go any further, I think I should back up and do a bit of kiln theory. So first of all, you have to load your kiln full of wood. Hmm. 
Once you have wood in your kiln, the next step is to pull moisture out of the wood. And there's various ways you can do that. But basically the moisture in the wood is gonna go into the air. Airborne moisture is measured in humidity. And once the humidity reaches a certain point, it stops pulling moisture out of the wood. At that point, you have to exhaust the air out of the kiln. Otherwise you won't be able to get any more moisture out of the wood. Now there are some other ways this could be achieved, but I've decided to take on the simplest method and just use an exhaust fan and a electronic controlled flap on the cold air intake side. Because they're both on the same circuit, they're run off the humidistat that measures airborne moisture and will open and close simultaneously. My current problem is all in the controller and it's just getting the fans to turn off. I've just been button mashing for a while here. I need that fan to turn off. We have a half of a kiln here. All right, so where we're gonna leave this video is I finished the dehumidification infrastructure for the dry kiln. If you're building something similar, whether whether it's a greenhouse or a dry kiln or any sort of structure that needs to move air around, I have links to all those fans that I use in my description. And then for the following video, I think next video we're gonna be looking at chimneys, which means we're gonna to have to cut some holes in the sea can, getting things ready to hopefully turn this thing on one day. We'll see you in the next one. So, I gotta cut another plug. <laughs> Feels so permanent cutting plugs. <laughs>